Hi, I'm Eileen Roach and welcome to today's episode of Between Friends. I'm delighted that you've joined me. I know it's a beautiful day in lots of part, parts of the country, like our friend Becky Mums in North Texas, right where we are. She says it's sunny and it is just beautiful. And, it, you know, our blue bonnets are up. If you're thinking about coming to Texas, now's the time to do it. It is an absolutely beautiful time of year here in Texas. So today we're talking fun stuff. Well, is it really fun stuff? Yeah, I think it is because stabilizer is such an integral part of embroidery. You can't stitch without it, right? And it comes in kind of a lot of different flavors, right? There's wash away, there's fusibles, there's uh, heat, heat aways and cut away and tear away. So it doesn't matter, matter whether you're going to rinse, iron, cut or tear, there are some right and wrong or right, just good habits to embrace so that it doesn't destroy your embroidery. Maybe not destroy, but you know, keep it looking its absolute best. That's why we do it, right? Uh, Barb Bruce, you're in North Carolina. You say it's chilly there. Sorry to hear that. I know we've had some bad weather move across the country, right? But um, here, in, good weather's coming, I can tell you. If it's coming from the Midwest to the East, it's going to be just gorgeous, just gorgeous. So, um, you know, we're going to talk all about stabilizers. Of course, that is what's on sale this week. In fact, all stabilizers are on sale. And you get free shipping when you stock up and purchase more than $75 worth of any product on dime. So please take advantage of that. And, you know, especially stabilizers and tear away and cut away, you really need to make sure you have a full inventory in your home. Do you need every single one? Maybe not. But sometimes, you know, you're in a pinch, you're working with a difficult fabric, and you really need one of those specialties. So let's go ahead and... Um, shop the wall. So I could just kind of show you some of the stabilizers that we're going to be talking about today. We are definitely going to be talking about the, the, so, uh, the water soluble topper, our sew and wash. You know, that's kind of a, a mesh type of stabilizer, but it is um, water soluble. And then of course, one of my favorites is the heat away. So uh, and we'll talk about cutaway and tear away. So we have 10 tips for you and we have irons out and a kettle and a, a thermometer and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, one thing, you know, one of the best things about our dime um, software, software, our stabilizers is that forever label on the end of the every roll of stabilizers. So that's going to tell you exactly what that white stuff is. Now the water soluble topper, easy to identify, right? It's that kind of clear plastic, like film translucent but boy when you just get the rolls that are all white it can be hard to identify that's why we put that forever label on the bottom of the uh tube that we roll those stabilizers in uh, so that's handy right because now you know exactly where it is so let's go ahead and look at tip number one okay so tip number one is one of the most basic stabilizers that you're going to use all the time and that's a tear away and you yeah you can just rip it away this is a pretty substantial satin stitch but if this was a delicate fine outline then what i would encourage you to do is grasp the fabric with one hand and from the other hand pull right at the uh put your thumb in <laughs> the stitches so that you can release that stabilizer and not distort the stitches. Now remember, this is a fairly substantial, substantial satin stitching, but if this was you know, just a running stitch outline and, or a two ply, boy, you really don't wanna distort them. The act of tearing away is violent, right? You're literally like ripping and tearing. So 
it's best to kind of pay attention and, you know, hold on to that fabric. Now for the inner area, same thing. You can just kind of use a seam ripper or something to just get a corner started and then you'll pull and uh, work your way all the way around the interior. So that's tip number one for tear away. And, you know, it is good to remove the excess, right? We don't need all of that stabilizer behind us. Now let's move over to another tear away that is a little different. So this one is, um, it's a tear away wash away and we, we sell it under two different types. So one is tear away wash away and it's kind of papery. I'm gonna see if you can hear it. Can you hear that? It's kind of, feels like paper a little bit, right? But we also sell another product called Peace and Stitch. They're very similar. And I, I just thought I would show you. So this was half of a towel, right? I stitched it, cut it in half, and then I threw it in the wash on a regular cycle and through the dryer so that you could see how it dissolves. It doesn't completely disappear. It's kind of like a tissue, right? So it will eventually, all these little fibers will go away. But in, it's very soft next to the skin and, and, and it's really soft inside the embroidery also. Now it stays in those satin stitches. It only disappears in those open areas. So that's what it looks like after it's washed on a terry cloth towel. Now this one, we're gonna save this for another tip in a little bit. I love using the piece and stitch for quilt blocks. So this is piecing in the hoop. And, you know, I stitch out that schematic and it tells you exactly where to land all of my patches. And this, these two, two more examples. Now they have not been washed yet, but they're pretty soft, fairly soft, right? Now this block has been completely washed and it totally dissolved. I washed this several times. We did get a little bit of shrinkage after I washed it. So that's something that you should, if you don't want your quilt blocks to shrink, then you should pre-shrink your fabrics before you piece them together. But I threw two of these blocks into a lingerie bag and put it into the uh, washing machine and the dry cycle. And I thought I would just let you see what it looks like when it comes out, right? They're gonna be all kind of wrinkled up, right? And now you can see how soft and supple this is. Unlike this, I can't do this scrunching on this block like I can on this one. So if you're worried about using a, a product like Piece and Stitch for applique on quilt blocks or for piecing in the hoop, don't worry because once it's laundered, it's going to be lovely, just lovely. I, I'm so excited to see how soft and supple they came out. So, and with a little bit of pressing, these blocks are gonna be gorgeous and ready to be pieced into a bigger uh, project. All right, let's see if we have any questions before I move on. Oh, Joanne Banco, you, Banco, you say that's a uh, gorgeous block. I know they are really pretty, right? Really pretty. Um, then let's see. Uh, Okay, Esther Hoplin, you're asking, did we fix the needle uh, the needle book? So that was the free design last week. We did fix that. So if you just download that again, you'll get the right shapes. Thanks for asking about that. That was um, an oversight on our end. We uh, apologize for that. Okay, so now let's go over to tip number three. Now this one's on cutaway and this is a heavy cutaway. So I used a heavy cutaway because this is a fairly stitch intensive design and it's a heavy t-shirt. Uh, so I like to trim this away with pinking shears, right? So I'm going to lift that cutaway away from the garment. We don't ever wanna work down like this close to the garment. I lift it up so I can keep my eye on the fabric underneath. Because imagine if I sliced into that fabric, right? My whole project would be probably ruined unless I got really creative with some appliques. And I would travel around the whole design to trim that away. The corners I'm going to round. Again, I'm gonna lift that corner of stabilizer and just round 
so that I get a nice round. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. And that would be, you know, wearable at that point. Why do we use pinking shears? We don't want a hard line, right? Now, this is a substantial weight uh, sweatshirt. So you're not going to see bleed through on this sweatshirt, but you don't want to see a hard line. Imagine if it's, you know, a, on, on figure, you want it to drape nicely on the body. You don't want to have these hard lines. So that's why we use pinking shears on a heavy cutaway. You can also use it on the lighter cutaways, but probably not necessary. It depends on how sheer it is. Okay, tip number three. Look at that adorable little unicorn t-shirt. Isn't that so cute? Um, okay, so what I want to show you about this, this is a fusible no-show cutaway stabilizer. So when we say no-show cutaway, we mean it has an adhesive on one side that is activated by heat, and that allows us to fuse it down all over the garment. And it's this is a big piece, right? And because this was stitched in a five by seven hoop, but we wanted to make sure that the all of the knit fabric that was going to be touching the hoop had stabilizer on it. So that was our goal, and that's why that is such a big piece of stabilizer. So I'm gonna take an iron. First, I'm gonna turn this inside out. And I want to remove some of this excess. You can see some of it is already lifted, but let's start down here at the bottom. And I have a couple irons here, so I'm going to start with a dry iron. And I hope it's still hot. Okay. And I'm just going to um, apply some heat to it. And when I do that, that allows me to separate that fusible really easily. It like kind of deactivates the adhesive and lets me lift it. Now, if I was just touching this up, right? And, and, you know, if it was stabilizer that was around here and I was applying an iron to it and I did not lift it, then after it dried and cooled off, well, not dried, but cooled off, it would stay adhered. So I don't want you to think that applying heat to it at any time will uh, separate it because we want to get kind of, see how it's really taut over there? Oh, I got a tight <laughs> leash here. Okay, so now I'm going to get those, um, I could use straight scissors or I could use my pinking shears that I just had and trim that away. Do I need to use the pinking shears? Probably not. Probably not on this lightweight stabilizer, but notice again, I'm lifting that stabilizer and I'm keeping an eye on that garment underneath so that I don't, um, you know, ruin it, <laughs> that'd be horrible. And so I would just travel all the way around, get all of this lifted. And here, we can, we can do that right here. I'm gonna pull a little more cord here, there we go. Notice on my iron, this is an old one I have at home. I put a little label on it that says dry, and I just always know don't put any uh, liquid in there. And that's because it's, you know, it's an older iron. And if I do put liquid in there, it will spit and kind of damage my fabric. So I just label it. And then I know that's the one I use for dry uh, tasks, because sometimes, you know, heat, uh, heat and water are not the mix that you want. You just want the heat. So and especially in this instance, right? So I'm just lifting that, separating it, and if I was doing this without heating it first, then, you know, it would be fighting and I would really have to be aggressive with uh, lifting it off that delicate knit fabric. Can you trim in here? Sure, you could trim in there if you wanted. And make that a little bit um, lighter weight. I'll just kind of snip in there. All right, I think that I think you probably get the idea on this one, and there is your finished garment. Now you could apply a fusible trico knit inner lining over that if you wanted to. So let's see. Okay, just want to make sure we don't have any questions. Do you ever pre-shrink your fusible no-show? I don't. I really don't. You know, it's a, a nylon polyester. It doesn't really shrink, so I, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Okay, so let's clean up some of this mess. And uh, see what is next. 
Okay, we have, oh, this is fun. Okay, so remember I showed you this towel that was um, had water soluble on the top, which you didn't know because I took just, I'm showing you this after it's been laundered, right? And that's the back. But here's the very same towel, uh, same design. It's actually the same terry cloth, the other half of it, and still has its topper on. And it has all of the backing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that backing. And that's how I would throw it into the wash, right? I would tear away what I could in that open area, get rid of it. And now on the topper, um, I want to, you know, the topper is still on there. And look, we have some um, thread tails here, some jump stitches. So keep that topper in place while you trim because I can slide my scissor in there and the topper is going to protect the nap so that I don't snip into it because don't you hate when that happens oh it's hard to control your scissors um, when you are trying to trim on top of a napped fabric like terry cloth so I'm just doing that okay now you know we all know that this is way too much water soluble stabilizer and I can tear it away. I can tear it off of quite a bit of it. Just release it and pull it away. Do the best that you can, but there is still quite a bit in those tiny open areas in the inside of those lovely scrolls. So now I'm going to take a steam iron. I have another iron and all these auto on and off. So this might take a minute. We might have to chat a little bit while it wakes up. So we'll let it do that. I'll just turn it off and turn it back on. You know, here in the office, we have to be really careful that we don't leave irons on overnight or on the weekend. Of course, you have to do that at home too, right? But when we leave the building, we leave the building and there's often no one in the building. So um, we always purchase auto shut off irons for that pur purpose. And we make sure that we don't disengage the auto shut off because, you know, I guess I can fess up now. Many, many, many years ago, I came in on a Monday and there was an iron still hot. Oh man, it was a miracle that we didn't burn the house down, but we didn't. So it was the last time I ever used an iron that didn't have an auto shut off. So, and of course it, when it happens at home, you know, before you go to bed, you might think, oh, I'll turn off that iron, right? I'll check that iron. So, okay, not enough now. Let's hope, right? Let's hope. Okay. Oh yeah, plenty hot, it's got steam. Okay, so now to remove those little bits, I'm going to, um, take a just a paper towel and place it over there and give it a really good steam. As you can see that steam, I hope you can see that steam coming up and we're pressing it and it's going to lift off just about every piece. Let's see. Yeah, you really have to give it time and it needs the heat and it needs the steam and that's what's going to make it uh, adhere to the paper towel and come off of the terry cloth. So there we have it. And it's just as easy. So great how that works out. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, now we get into the fun stuff. Now we get into the water soluble. What stabilizer was used on the back of the towel of the sea? So that was tear away, wash away. We also sell it under the name of Peace and Stitch, uh, which is just lovely. Oh, Joanne Banco. I love that. She goes, oh, how many times have I gotten in the car, went back in the house to check the iron? My husband does it with the coffee pot and I do it with the iron. Well, now I have the iron set on a uh, electrical strip, right? And a, it, a light is also connected to that. So when I turn it off, the light goes off. And when it's on, obviously the light is on. So I can kind of look up, my, my sewing room is upstairs. And if that light is on, I know I got a truck up there and turn it off. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let, oh, I just read some of these. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead. Now we're gonna get into the fun stuff, right? This is the water soluble. We're gonna do uh, tap water at 
room temperature, like what it comes out of the tap. And then um, we're going to do warm and then we're going to do really hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ringwell Coxon. Oh, listen to this. She has her iron connected to Alexa and she could check on it when she's gone to make sure it was turned off. Maureen, you know, I think you're a step ahead of me for sure. I love that. Good idea. Good idea. And let's see. Uh, our friend from Northern Portugal seems like everything that heats in Europe shuts off, whether you want it to or not. Haven't tested it much, though. Well, you know, a household iron actually draws more yachtage. yachtage. I, wish, I wish it was a yacht. More wattage than any other household appliance. So it could be, you know, it's auto shutting due to power surges. So know that. I, like, I'm a little nervous here. I have two irons set up. Oh, man. Anyway, I did switch out some of the devices. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is water-soluble stabilizer and freestanding lace because it's such a popular thing. So this is going to be tip seven and eight. And why are there two? Well, take a look at this bow. Look at the beautiful shape of the upper portion of the bow, and yet the ribbon tails are really soft and delicate. It's not a different stitch. In fact, they're absolutely identical stitches. It's all in the temperature of the water soluble uh, of the water that you use to dissolve the water soluble stabilizer. So let's go ahead and play with that. Sometimes you want shape, and sometimes you don't. So. Okay, here we have um, regular tap water, and here we have regular tap water. That's just um, a smaller amount. And then this bowl is empty. So let's see if we can get these centered so that it all looks better for you. Eh, you knew that. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I have hot water. Oh, this is going to crash. Sorry about that. I have hot water, a kettle that I'm going to pour in this bowl that's totally empty. So that's nothing but hot water. And then I'm going to get my guide, my thermometer, and let's go ahead and get a reading. So I'll turn that around so you can read it. So this is 154. This is 64. And this is 74. Okay. So Let's heat up, mm, let's heat up this one as best we can, kind of monitor that. Okay, now that's up to 80, 107. We'll give it a little bit more. Okay, 117. So on my, on my bow portion, I want cold water, right? And I'm just going to show you what happens when you go in really cold water. Not much. Look at that. See, when it comes out, it's still kind of there. I could let it sit for quite a while. I could also pull on it and, you know, try to get it to work. But I could move to a, just a little bit warmer. And now you can see it dissolving. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's come right out, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the rest of that. Um, and then we'll just let that. I had did bring a, a tray. Of course, now my hands are wet and I'm working with all this stuff. Okay, so we're going to pull that out. And that's what I do at home, put it right on a baking tray. And then on this one, now this is our flat bottom, right? Our, our tails. And this one, we want to shape really well also, but we want it to be flexible. So I'm going to put that one in the hottest. And I'll let that sit a little bit, kind of let it swirl around. And I may even, you know, if I was home, I would let this sit for a little bit, like, you know, five, maybe even 10 whole minutes. Just let it sit. No harm, no foul. And when I finally do take it out, it's going to be really soft and supple, and it will allow me to uh, just let it dry, and it'll be kind of like fabric, really nice and soft. As where this one, as it dries, I can shape. And so let me show you how I do that. I have one that's already prepared. So look what I did. I took, I taped four straws together and I just used them to shape that bow so that it's going to stay in that fashion. So I would, I would pin this together 
probably what I would do. I would just pin that and take the other side, do the same. Here, let me pull that over here so you can see. You just need some kind of circular device or whatever shape it is. If you're making a box, you know, a lace box maybe, and you need it to be nice and square, then you just let it dry in that fashion. You can reshape it later. You can manipulate it a little bit. But if you do this initial shaping, it really does help you get that gorgeous shape, you know, that you're going for, right? Look how nice those that bow stands up. And wouldn't that look just lovely on a present? It's really nice. Okay, so now what about earrings? We'll set this aside. Earrings are so fun, right? We love earrings. We have so many new earrings to play with. Now, earrings, um, I kind of would do the, the medium heat because I want them to keep their shape somewhat. I don't want them to be super uh, soft, but I also don't want them to be sticky, right? Because sometimes they can be, you know, if you leave too much in, it can be sticky. So these look just perfect. And of course, we have to let them dry. Now, earrings, I would take uh, on, after they're somewhat dried, I would then make sure they're nice and flat, trim them up, and press them on like terry cloth uh, so that they, you know, have their nice flat shape. Same thing with, you know, here we have some others. We might as well finish the job. We could do all of these at one time. That's one thing that's so fun about small little lace projects. Now, I, a little um, little warning, you know, if you don't use a bowl, if you are tempted to rinse under the spigot, hot water, if you have like asbestos hands, you know, um, these little guys can get out of your hand and down that drain really, really quickly. So I would suggest always using a bowl uh, or a pan to, to do that in. And that way you won't lose any of them. Okay, we'll just take our time and finish this out. Aren't they fun? You're gonna see these in future Between Friends episodes for sure. I'll be wearing these, all these fun colors. I love this, these uh, earrings from my latest earring collection. It's a little old now, but I love them. They're just the right size, you know. I'm kind of a petite person, so they're not too big. I like that, really nice. Okay, so that was pretty fun, right? We love all that stuff. Okay, and you know what? I think I forgot the heat away, so we can move on to that in a minute. I'll clean all that up. So let's see. Um, Joanne Banco, you say you'd rather cook up free sewing embroidery than cookies? Yeah. Thanks, Joan. Oh, yeah, they were really colorful. That's our color play. Those uh, medley colors that look so nice together. Really, really lots of fun. Okay, so let's go ahead now and talk about the heat away. And what's heat away? You probably wonder, what is that? All right, let me clean up my mess here so that we're not um, getting water where we don't want it. One thing you should be really careful about is those bowls of water next to the rolls of stabilizer. Because <laughs> that'll be a hot mess. All right. This is when you really need another person in the studio. Okay, let's see. So heat away. I'll show you why we use heat away. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Well, you can't make this stuff up, right? You sure can't make this stuff up. So I was preparing this for you and I, you know, removed the ugly layer on the uh, lint roller. And now this has really adhered to my stabilizer. So I'm going to rip it apart. See what happens. Oh, okay. Not too bad. Holy moly. Okay. This is tip number five, but we're, we're out of order. It doesn't matter. So this is the stabilizer of choice when you are stitching on sheer fabrics. So here I have some sample stitching of a baptismal uh, cloth. I just was testing fonts for a friend and, you know, size and color and all of that. But I wanted to make sure that there was no stabilizer visible unlike these 
samples, right over here, where you see, look at that tear away that's there, Ugh, right? Even when you pull it away, it's still somewhat visible. It just is. So this heat away is fabulous. It's a really great product. And it's clear like this. You're supposed to use it not as a topper uh, because, you know, you use it at, behind the embroidery on a sheer fabric. But I wanted you to see this process really well. So I didn't do it on a sheer fabric. I just did it on this cotton fabric so you could see what happens to it when it kind of crumbles away. So let's see, uh, we'll get this out of the way. I'll go get our ironing pad again. I might double that up a little bit. Okay, um, and we're gonna rip, tear away the excess that we can for sure, right? Because again, you need a whole piece to go into the hoop, but we don't need all that. So. I'll leave some in place. How about if I just cut it so you can see what happens to it? Because we're gonna heat it and it's gonna crumble. You know, like literally into crumbs, talking about cookies, it kind of does look like cookie crumbs. So we'll leave that big piece there. Okay, now I, it kind of is unnerving because you literally just touch it and you know, I mean, how many times have you touched a piece of plastic with a hot iron and you're just like, ah, it's a disaster, right? It gets all over and it's really a hot mess. Look at that. It's totally gone. Some of it is on the iron, but it's going to burn off and it's going to turn into crumbs. So let me go on the back and let this dissolve. And you can't even see them. I mean, it is just totally dissolved. So it works just fantastic. And you know, it doesn't harm the iron. And if it does, then you just cool it off and wait for it to um, be cool, you know, be totally cold, and then you can just flake it off. So, and I brought this out, this uh, lint roll, because normally I have to go and pick it up, you know, the crumbs, but really there weren't any, so it worked out just fine. That's how much it dissolved. I guess I have it on super hot. Anyway, yeah. Talking yourself into more lace software, Linda Brooks. Well, you know, you should. It's really great. Lots of reasons to make lace. Lots of reasons to wear lace. Super fun. So, you, Joan, you want to do that on a dry iron. And when you purchase a roll of heat away, instructions are on the label. It tells you what, you know, it'll remind you, use dry. So uh, always good to know that for sure. Yeah. Okay. So next up is a tip from Deborah Jones, and I stitched out, tried to stitch some puckers. How come you can't stitch any puckers when you need to stitch puckers, right? If it was, an, you know, something really important that I wanted to like wear or give. All right, so let's see. This is um, some lettering, ew, right? That we just stitched here at Dime. And there are some puckers here. So let's go ahead and pull this apart. Remove that top frame. And we slide that apart, easiest, right? Let that go. Now, we most certainly could, you know, if this was a garment, we would take the time to um, cut this out around the, well, let's just do it. We have those um, scissors right here, maybe. Oh yeah, they are, they're right here. That's amazing. And we can heat this up so I can lift it off, right? There we go. All right, let's see. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a piece of our So Soft. Um, it's like an interfacing and we often use it on children's garments on the wrong side. So I'm just going to fuse this. I'm gonna pull on the fabric a little bit to flatten out those puckers. Now, my friend, Deborah Jones, our director of consumable products here at Dime, she's the one who taught me about this. So I'll give her credit for sure. And I'm just gonna use a cooler iron, turn that down a little bit, just a little bit. But with the act of pulling on the fabric while you iron will help you set 
the fabric into this interfacing and that'll take out the puckers. So I'm just going to do it piece, you know, kind of one side at a time so I can get some good leverage on the uh, stitching. So I'm here I am pulling that and I'm not pulling the trico. I'm allowing the trico to do its job and I'll just do it one more time. There we go. Oh, I don't want the steam on now. <laughs> there we go. Okay. See that? Oh, it's hot. Doesn't want to be that hot. But now you can see. Yeah, maybe that, maybe my iron was a little too hot, but it will pull out those puckers that were at the edges of the embroidery and make that nice and smooth. Now I could work on this bottom edge and pull that nice and flat. And on a knit garment, this works out just beautifully. So yeah, dime fuso soft. Thanks so much, Joanne Banco. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. <laughs> all these names, it's hard to stay on top of them all. My, my last tip is on adhesive sew and wash uh, because, you know, that can be a little tricky, right? The key to removing that is to put the lace or whatever garment, whatever you used it on uh, into a washing machine with fabric softener like downy and just use the normal amount you would use for that load. I do like to use a lingerie bag just so that I'm kind of keeping it separate from the other garments. And that fabric softener will dissolve and disintegrate that adhesive that's on the sew and wash while the water will also let the actual, you know, stabilizer go. So yeah, it's it works beautifully. And your fabric or your lace will become like fabric. It'll be really fluid, very drapey. You'll love it. So that's the trick for that. Okay. Well, that's my top 10 tips. You know, there's only so much, um, so many topics that we can talk about here at, at, uh, between friends, but next week we do have a, uh, fun class. I'm going to have Deborah Jones come in. She should have been with me here today, but something came up. She's going to be here with me next week. And we're going to talk about applique whole lot of applique and um we'll be here on a, it'll be i um, we'll think the 11th yeah my goodness can you believe the middle of april already heaven help us okay she'll be here with me and um we're going to talk applique ashley will be back on april 16th and she's going to talk about getting started with our one of our newest softwares which is the edge to edge plugin from Amelie Scott Designs. Now, many of you know Amelie Scott Designs is uh, owned by Christine Connor, the creator of Edge to Edge Technique, really. She's the one who wrote the first book on that, so kudos to her. And Ashley's gonna be teaching that new program on April 16th. Now, I will tell you, if you already have the basic Edge to Edge, this is a plug-in. You do need the basic first, but. Oh, I suggest you go and watch. You're going to learn an awful lot from Ashley, whether you have the software or not. And talking about one of our favorite topics, right? Quilting with your embroidery machine, how to figure out those hoopings and borders. So now we can address borders, which is just awesome. We love when you like us on Facebook and when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's how we know that you are happy to receive the education that we provide. We're always, you know, we read your comments. We like to know what we could be doing to improve. So please fire away. That's how we know. Um, and, you know, if you uh, like us on Facebook and then we can find you, right? And we can all be friends. So we have the On the House coming up. And before we do that, we're going to see your projects. But before we get started, I do, many people say, well, where do I get these designs, these free designs? Well, they're on our website, dzgns.com. You just go to embroidery um, at one of those tabs and then drop down to free designs and you'll see it. When you stitch something out, please tag your project with Dime Sew Along, Exquisite Thread, um, or on the house using those hashtags. And that helps us find you, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook, because we want to see what you've been stitching. And let's all take a look at what you've been stitching.
Oh, so much fun. We love seeing what you're doing. This is this week's design. Hello, Spring. We used Aurora HTV for the applique of these rain boots, but um, you can use whatever fabric you like, but we just thought that was so springy and it kind of gives a glistening look to the applique so that it is uh, looks like maybe how your garden boots would look, right? A little wet, a little damp. Aren't they so cute? Oh, Linda Brooke, she loves them. I don't blame her. So does Dawn Tennyson. Yeah, it, they're really so much fun. And remember, you can go and download any of our On the House designs Every week they're, they're free. And if you missed a week, go back and get them, right? Because they're professionally digitized, well thought out, and they're seasonal. We love them. We're really happy and excited about it. So I'd like to thank you for joining me today. And I hope that uh, you'll come back next week when I have Deborah Jones here. We'll have a whole lot of fun. And in the meantime, please take advantage of today's special, which is our all stabilizers on sale. And it's a great time to stock up. You'll be, you'll be you know, in season for your stitching for the summer and the spring. So thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next week.